Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good, confidently plan, launch and manage your products, and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Hey there, Catherine here. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special birthday bonus episode of the Resilient Retail Game Plan. This episode is going out on my actual birthday, but it's also the club's birthday too. So I started the Resilient Retail Club a year ago, last May. And what I wanted to do for this episode is just reflect back really on the last 12 months and and what it's taught me about creative product businesses, what I've really learned in the last year. And I just thought it was a really nice opportunity to have a bit of a pause moment and think back over the last 12 months and some of the really interesting things that I've discovered about running a membership. Before I get started, I just wanted to remind you that if you head over to resilientretailclub.com slash birthday, then you can take a look at my special birthday offer, which is a double giving offer. So as it's a double birthday, it's double giving. So I give to you, which means that you get a box worth £35, which has a canvas shopping bag, which is perfect sized for carrying parcels around, as well as a branded notebook and some brilliant custom pencils, which were created by Pencil Me In Shop just for the Resilient Retail Club. And you are going to get that box for free if you sign up to the annual membership this week only. And I'm also giving back because I'm giving 10% of all annual membership sales this week to the Microloan Foundation, who help female entrepreneurs in sub-Saharan Africa work their way out of poverty by starting their own business. So I'm really excited to partner with them for this week. And I'm really excited to offer you this special deal. So go take a look at resilientretailclub.com slash birthday. But now on to the podcast. So it's really interesting. I ran a course called Grow Your Sales, which is actually now part of the membership. You get it if you sign up. It's it, You get immediate access to that. I ran that in January of last year, 2020. And I was intending on running it again two more times. But of course, then, as we know, in March, lockdown hit and it just didn't feel quite right to be running a course like this. And I actually also just really felt that I wanted to create a resource to help more product business owners to have a community that I could show up for, that I could encourage, that was something that was an accessible price point for more people. And that was just really a place that people could come together and get support during what was very, very stressful times. And to be honest, it's continued to be a stressful year for a lot of people. So that was really my thinking behind it. So I very quickly, I think I made the decision in April and then I launched in, well, I did a pre-launch in mid-May and then launched officially at the end of May. So it was quite a scrabble to get everything all together. But the benefit that I had was by this point, I've been working with creative product businesses, one-to-one and in courses and workshops. I've been working with them for over two years at this point. So I felt like I had a pretty good idea of what people needed. And so I was delighted when we launched the membership. And I think we we hit 100 members pretty much, if not immediately, then pretty shortly afterwards. So we're now at 300. So it was a really great start to kick off with a decent number of members. And I think that really goes, really speaks to the first point that I, when I'm thinking about the kind of five key things that I learned as from the last 12 months about product businesses. One of the first things that I learned really was that the community was so incredibly, is, is so incredibly important in the Resilient Retail Club. 
in my head when I thought about starting it, what I was thinking about was really the content. So there is a pretty extensive library of courses. Um, it pulls together some of the courses that I'd already created before I created the membership. So I had, for example, masterclasses on what to do when sales are tough. I had my wholesale courses with Therese Autumnblad, which are all about getting you ready to wholesale. And a course on pricing your products. And then, of course, the Grow Your Sales course, which is what I had been running, I'd been intending on running in 2020. So the content was what I was really focused on. And then I went on to create, I think I've created two more major courses. So one is Start Your Business, which is pretty in-depth, taking people from idea to, to launch. And the other one was Grow Your Profits, uh, which is all about, well, a lot of the work that I do with my one to one clients. So it's things like cash flow, knowing your numbers, looking at profitability, creating documents to help you manage your business. So it's really quite in depth and it really draws very heavily on my 17 years experience in big retailers. So the courses were what I was kind of focused on to begin with. And what I was really, when I thought about starting the membership, as I said, one of the big drivers was, well, I can create this content and then it's available for people. And that I think the content is really important and I'm really proud of the content that we've got available. And I think there's a wide variety and a lot of really useful information, tools and templates as well for everything from planning your sales to coming up with sales ideas to managing your stock, managing your email marketing, for example. There's an awful lot of content there. But actually what was really important and what I know is important to the members is the community. So that's kind of been the biggest learning for me is that the community has been from day one, I have to say, really engaged, really lively. And every day there's discussions popping up in the Facebook group. I'm in the Facebook group every day, Monday to Friday, answering queries or sharing in people's successes. And I think for me, that's been one of the big learnings that community is just so, so important, especially at a time when a lot of people are first starting out or, or, or I should say are working maybe in their homes, maybe they're not bound, having other people to bounce ideas off. And so I think that community aspect just gets more and more important. So I always ask people when they join, I ask for a little bit more information about their business, about what their plans are, about what their reasons are for joining the club. And, and something that comes up a lot is that feeling of not having colleagues to bounce ideas off and just really wanting to be able to make that connection with other people and other businesses. So I just think that it's a really underestimated element of running a business is having a community around you. And I certainly know that for me as a business owner, I really relish being part of not only my own community, but also other communities that I'm part of, other membership groups that I'm part of. It means a huge amount to me and it really does give me the benefit of being able to talk to people who are like-minded, who are grappling with the same sort of issues that I'm grappling with, that don't look at you like you're completely bananas because you spend your time making reels <laughs> on Instagram using Sylvanian families or any of the other crazy things that I get up to. So community, that's, I'd say the biggest learning is that just it just really hammered home to me watching this community grow over the last year, seeing the way that people interact with each other as well, seeing that the support that people give each other is so inspiring. And I just love nothing more than when somebody posts a question in the Facebook group and they get such great support and feedback from other business members. And obviously I'm there as well to answer questions, but the members themselves have a broad variety of experiences and it's really inspiring to see them jump in and help one another. So the second thing then that I've learned about creative product businesses during my 12 months running the membership is it's really struck me. As I said, I'm a big believer in the personal touch. So everyone who joins gets a personal video message from me. We have a welcome member session where there's a group call where new members can meet one another and, and I can find out a little bit more about them. And, and what I find really fascinating in these talks, these sessions, and just in general conversations with people inside the group is just how many times I hear somewhat of a similar story when it comes to the creative product businesses that people particularly that people in my membership have started. And it usually goes something like this. People have had a very responsible, serious career. 
there are people who've been head teachers, people who've been solicitors, run departments for the council, run foreign exchange desks for large banks, all kinds of things, really wide, diverse range of experience, as well as people, of course, who've come through the more creative routes. But there's lots of people who have had jobs that were maybe less than creative, let's put it that way. And then something has happened. So this has been uh, a variety of different stories, but there's usually sort of a pivotal moment for people where it's either they've started a family or they've had mental health problems, whether that's anxiety, depression, burnout, workplace stress, or they've had physical illnesses as well. And But something has happened which meant that they... They either can't carry on with their job as they were before, or they just simply realise that they don't want to. And I think what I find so fascinating about this story is that then they've rediscovered their creativity. So I think that that's one thing that I'm always really conscious of when it comes to talking to people about their creative product businesses. And that's the extent to which for so many people, they are a creative outlet. They're about getting back in touch with a part of them that maybe they haven't really engaged with for many years. Maybe it's something that they really loved when they were younger, but sort of life got in the way or they made different decisions and it took them down a different path. And so as a result, this is about them reconnecting with their creativity. And I find that really fascinating. As I said, there were many people. I remember one time we were in the club and we were having a social session and there were about 30 people on the social call and people were sharing their stories about how they started their business. And I would say about two thirds or maybe even three quarters of the people on the call shared a story that fit that overall (laughs) storyline. I said the word story too many times there. But it's that kind of narrative about people's lives get disconnected from their creativity. They make decisions which uh, maybe felt right at the time or maybe feel right for 10 years or 15 years or 30 years even. But then at some point, something makes them reevaluate and makes them want to reconnect with their creativity. And I just think that for me, as somebody who manages a community of creative product businesses, for me, it's always important to honour that and to recognise that for a lot of people, this goes way deeper than a business. This is about themselves. This is about their identity. This is about reclaiming their creativity. And I just find that really fascinating and so admirable as well. So then that brings me on to my third point about the five things that I've learned from running a membership of creative product businesses. And that is the number of people who'll say to me something along the lines of, I don't know anything about business, but somehow I'm running one. And I find that really fascinating as well. There are for sure people who start, who go on this journey, maybe like I described a little bit in the last point about they have something happens in their life and then they decide they want to reconnect with their creativity. And some of the people will do that and then they'll think to themselves, right, okay, I want to create a business. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. And they very much approach it from day dot as a business. And they're very, very focused on the outcomes and building that as a business. There are also people, I would say possibly those are maybe less common than people who follow their creative impulses. They want to do something that really speaks to them creatively in a way that they haven't been able to engage with their creativity for a long time. And then they discover, (laughs) or it grows, or it becomes more successful. And then they discover that they are running a business. They have business costs, they have customers, they have all of the infrastructure that goes around running a business. For some people, they've seen it leap forward hugely in the last year, which has suddenly given them a sort of glimpse as to what it could become. And so then it's almost like they are now running a business where they maybe didn't intend to. And again, I feel like as someone who, as as a community leader, then that's a really important thing to honour and a really important thing to help walk people through because there's, I mean, I did a business degree. (laughs) So my degree is in international business from Warwick Business School. I then went and worked in the corporate world for 17 years. So when I started my business, I was coming at it from a very much like, okay, this is a business. These are my sales targets because that's just the way my brain works. And it's just the way that I have been programmed for a very, very long time now. And so I always find it really interesting when I'm talking to people who 
maybe are, are dealing with things in a slightly different way. And it's also different because although I do actually find it very creatively rewarding in a lot of way running my own business, even though my business isn't about creating uh, products or art or craft or anything that anything like that. I still think there's a lot of creativity in planning and also in creating courses and materials and social media posts and all the rest of it. There's lots of creativity, but at the same time, I I didn't start my business specifically to be more creative. So I'm always really fascinated by this sort of slight tension that some people feel between right. I started this business to be more creative. And now I'm being creative, but now I'm kind of dealing with some of these things about being a business owner and asking myself that question, am I a business owner? And it's something, it's a really fascinating question to ask a lot of creative product business founders is that, are you a business person? And a lot of people, because they have this idea that, or this sort of slight block about being business either means corporate or stale or um, restricted, then people find it hard sometimes to answer that question, or they find it hard to embrace their identity as a business owner. Whereas in my mind, if you've got a business that you own, then you're a business owner. You're a business. If you're a person and you have a business, then you're a business person. So it's for me very cut and dry, but it's a, just a fascinating conversation that I've really enjoyed having over the last 12 months with people about this idea of if you didn't intend to start a business, what do you do when you find yourself running one? And I think for me, then it's about trying to keep the business part of the business kind of light and not too onerous. So if you really love the creating part, then I still think you should know your numbers. I still think you should have a really good solid understanding of how your business works and what your plans are and where you want to go. But I think that you've got to keep that light and you've got to keep reconnecting back to the bit that you love. Because again, the one thing that has really come apparent to me in the last year as well is that following what you love and paying really close to attention to the things that you do that light you up is actually a really important part of running your own business. And the further you get away from that, the more you end up doing the things that you hate doing, then the harder it will be for you to grow. So it sounds like it's very self-indulgent to map and mold your business around the things that you love doing. But I actually think that if you're in the business, if you're in the business, if you're, if you have the intention of building a long-term business, then I really do think you need to pay attention to what you love doing because if you don't, then that is what will lead you eventually to burn out or to just one day going, you know what, actually the idea of having a stable income and paid holiday and sick pay just becomes too tempting. So for me, that's been one of the really interesting things to learn about creative product business owners in the last year is the number of them that didn't intend to run a business but now find themselves doing so and then working with them to find ways that they can get to grips with the fundamentals of their business and can have the skills that they need to manage that business side, but without it becoming so onerous and so unpleasant that it really makes them want to quit. (laughs) So then number four, the fourth thing that I've learned from running a membership for creative product businesses in, in the last year is just how hard you work, how hard creative product business owners work and how many different things that they juggle as well. How many different things that you have to get your head around as you start a business. And for me, doing things like creating the Start Your Business course really made me reflect on that because I was going through literally step by step all of the things that you need to think about when you start. And there are a lot. It's a it's a long course. And the other thing for me as well is being in the membership group every day, being in the Facebook group and seeing the kind of questions that people ask. People have to get their heads around so many different things. They have to get their heads around packaging, around royal mail and which royal mail option is best for you and what options you have and how to fill out a manifest and all of these things. You have to figure out how to talk to customers, how to deal with customer service, how to hit that balance between being available for your customers, but also having a life. You have to grapple with social media. You have to get your website to convert. You have to look at your SEO or at least understand enough about it to make it work for you. You have to make decisions about if you're going to run paid ads. You have to look at ways that you can promote your business and have a PR strategy 
you have to have an email list and get your head around what you're going to say to them and what you and how often you're going to email them. The list just goes on and on and on. And then you throw in curveballs like dealing with um, working out whether or not you can even operate as a business or have people in your unit to help you pack your products because of social distancing, whether or not you have to be registered for VAT in France post-Brexit. All of this stuff has just thrown more curveballs at creative product businesses who are already climbing a really, really steep learning curve. So hats off to all of you, (laughs) all of you creative product businesses listening, because you juggle so much. And I hear it all the time when I talk to my one-to-one clients, when I talk to the members, when I talk to other small business owners, when I'm having conversations with people on my Instagram DMs, I'm hearing it time and time again. You have so many different things to juggle, so many different things to get your head around. And I think for me, again, that's the real beauty of the membership is that the shared knowledge is there as well. And I love that. I love that aspect. It's really exciting that people can put their heads together and help each other out, pass on recommendations, talk about the latest third party wholesale platforms and how they found those, all these kinds of things. And it's been a real pleasure as well to work with some great experts on workshops. We've had workshops on using video in your business, workshops on website conversion, on email marketing, on PR, you name it. We've had people into the membership to talk about it. And I know that that's really, and there's still many topics that we could cover. So it's it's just it's just really to say that, of course, having worked in retail for 21 years this year and having worked with businesses now for three years, I think it was something I've always been aware of, just how complex and demanding product businesses are. But I think for me this last year, working with them in the membership and just seeing the questions that people ask and seeing the need that there is for really good information on a really wide variety of topics has just really hammered that home for me. And then point number five, what have I learned about creative product businesses from 12 months of running a membership? I would say that mindset is so important and this has really come up again and again. Actually, funnily enough, not not even so much in 2020, but really in 2021, because 2021 has been so demanding for so many people. I did a poll on my Instagram stories the other day. And I, and I said, have you found the last few weeks and months tough in your business? And I think it was about 90, I'm going to say it was like 98% of people were saying it had been really tough. And there, so there were there were a couple of hundred people who answered. And, and I just think that it speaks to the universal nature of what a tough start to the year it's been. And so when I talk about mindset, it's about, again, it's not like a sort of wishy-washy thing. Mindset is your ability to get up every day and keep going even when things feel bumpy. It's the ability to keep going even when they feel exhilarating, but also overwhelming. But then also when you kind of come down with a bump with consumers being distracted and things reopening and us making another round of shifts in our lives. The mindset is just so important. And when I ran my challenge, I did a five day challenge back in April, which was called Reset, Recharge, Refocus. And it was all about this kind of looking back at the last few months and then looking forward. And one thing that I found really fascinating was the first task was to get everyone to look and pick out the positives of what happened. And so many people told me, oh, actually, do you know what? It wasn't as bad as I thought. And I think that that's the key thing for me with mindset is that that we can talk ourselves into this place where we think it's all my fault or I must do make terrible products or there must be lots of dreadful things happening in my business and, and I'm messing up and that's why it's not working. But that is just such a it's, it's so hard to get out of that once you get into that mindset. And when I've seen people in the club, especially who have been able to look at it and to go, do you know what? Actually, it's not as bad as I thought. Let me keep moving forward. People are still having really fantastic results. People are still having great sales months. People are still winning new wholesale customers. People are launching new websites or launching on Etsy or doing all kinds of things in their business. And for me, that's really what this year has hammered home to me is that having that mindset, having that support, having that community around you is such a game changer. It it just really helps you get from that 
place where you decide it must all be about you and how you're failing. And it's about you instead going, okay, well, what can I do? Whenever things change, there are always opportunities. So I think that it's just really, really important to remember that the the mindset challenges don't go away either. There's a great phrase, which is new level, new devil, uh, which I say quite a lot to some of my larger clients who've grown, who are maybe feeling like, hang on a minute, I thought this sort of thing went away. And it's just really to reiterate that it doesn't really go away, that people of all stages of business will have these mindset challenges, will get stuck. I was talking to a business owner who has got a really phenomenal business that has been growing and growing for two to three years now at an incredible rate. And she was telling me that she still gets nervous when she launches products. And I was absolutely gobsmacked. I was like, I couldn't believe it. Your business, which does so, so well, you still get nervous when you launch products. And it really was a light bulb moment for me when I I just thought, you know what? It's so true. We think about mindset sometimes as something when we first start out, but actually having that mindset, that just ability. And by mindset, I mean literally the ability to, I don't want to say not take things personally because I know it is very personal, especially when it's your business, but to have that ability to be a little bit more objective, to be a little bit more big picture, to be able to say, okay, if they don't love it this time around, I'll launch something else that they will love as opposed to finding a bad launch, a reason to give up or a reason to stop. So I think mindset and getting that support that you need is just so critical and it doesn't go away. Even people who've been running their businesses for 10, 15 years still have those moments where they have doubts and worries and feel nervous. So I think it's something that all business owners, no matter the stage that they're at, can can really benefit from that support and input and having a community around you to help bolster you. Because You can have the best product in the world, but if you're feeling terrible about it and terrible about yourself and terrible about your business, you won't show up in the way that your customer needs you to and you won't put it out there in front of them. So for me, that is one of the most important things we can do as business owners is work on our own mindset and believe in ourselves and believe in our businesses and find the people who will hold our hands and cheer us on even when we don't feel like we can do it for ourselves. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. It was really nice, actually, just to take a few minutes and reflect back. I have absolutely, I have to say, I have absolutely loved having a membership. And I want to give a shout out to Laura Ludlow, who runs the Discover Her membership, who was the person who told me that I had to run a membership. And I was kind of sceptical for a while. And then uh, I went ahead and I did it. I'm also a member of the Membership Academy as well, which is run by Mike Morrison and Callie Willow, which is for people who run memberships. There's a membership about memberships. Sounds very meta. But if anybody has um, is thinking about a membership, they can work for product businesses as well, for sure. Uh, but I definitely highly recommend them because they're absolutely brilliant. So I've I've been on a learning journey myself this year, which I've loved And I've just loved, I think, as I said, going back to the whole community aspect, I've absolutely loved having a community that I can show up for every single day that support each other as well. And it's just a really supportive, positive place to be. And I hope for any members who are listening to this, I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have. So I'll leave you there as there will be our usual episode will be out tomorrow. (laughs) Um, Not to worry. This is just a quick one-off bonus to tell you a little bit about what I've learned over the last 12 months. And also, as I said, just to mention, go check out resilientretailclub.com slash birthday for all of the information about the special birthday bundle that I am offering, where you get an exclusive gift box with a year's membership of the Resilient Retail Club, as well as making a donation to the Microloan Foundation. So go check it out. Do, if you have a moment to rate and review the podcast, I do love it so, so much. Thank you so much. And if you're a member, then why not share on Instagram your highlight of the club over the last 12 months? I would absolutely love to hear it. Have a great day. And as I said, next episode will be out as usual tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. 
Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while, but want to get more focused and organized when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month, and a supportive and active community, the Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.